Hallo Freunde, willkommen zurück zu Let's Play Let's Read Katawa Shoujo. Ja, wir sind immer noch im... Was heißt immer noch? Wir sind jetzt ja, im dritten Akt mit Emi und äh, ja... Hisao hat sich ein bisschen Sorgen gemacht, weil sie es ein bisschen herunterspielt, dass sie eventuell humpelt und vielleicht Beschwerden hat äh, mit ihren Prothesen oder wie auch immer. Ähm, jetzt war uns die Entscheidung auferlegt worden, ähm, dass entweder ruhen zu lassen oder äh, ja doch mal weiter nachzuhaken was jetzt hier sache ist ähm, weil sie anscheinend das ganze nicht unbedingt zur sprache bringen möchte gut äh, eure entscheidung war eindeutig wir sollen weiter nachhaken das werden wir jetzt tun are you absolutely sure you don't want to go ahead and adjust it before heading up the stairs You could get hurt if you don't, right? I said it was fine, Hiso. Seriously, don't worry about it. I've got some experience in these matters after all. Yeah, I suppose so. Amy grins reassuringly. Honestly, Hiso, I appreciate the concern, but I really am okay. Now really, I need to get going. Your attempts to keep me around are doomed to fail. Okay, so kann man es auch sehen, aber das war ja nicht der Fall. Hey, of course. Just prolonging the goodbye, I suppose. Nee, das war nicht deine Absicht. Another grin lights up Amy's face. Good night, Hiso. Good night. As she limps inside, I find myself hoping she's okay. Despite her assurances that she's fine. I think I can call this a su successful first date. Hell, any day that ends with Amy pinning me under a tree to kiss me can't be bad, can it? I head back to my room, mentally thank the gods that Kenji doesn't ambush me in the hallway and get started on my homework. Ja, Gott sei Dank, Kenji kann am Beinen auf den Nerv, auf den Nerven gehen. The morning is far too early for my taste. It doesn't help that I had trouble sleeping last night. There were simply too many things to think about. My mind refused to slow down. Instead I replayed the rooftop, the park and everything else over and over in my mind. There's a small part of my mind that is still paranoid that this has all been some kind of joke that I'll meet up with Amy at the track and she'll act like nothing happened yesterday. Pushing these thoughts to the back of my mind, I throw on my running clothes and open the door. Amy's waiting for me with her usual smile. You're late. Or at least you're not early today. Are you tired or something? I find myself ruefully rubbing the back of my head. <sighs> something like that, yeah. Lots to think about and all that. Amy giggles at my mild understatement. Yeah, I didn't sleep that well either. I was actually glad you weren't early cause I wasn't early either. I wonder if the same thing kept us awake. The image of her weeping face passes through my mind. <sighs> What kept you up? Amy's expression falters, but she quickly notices my curiosity and forces a smile. Nothing important. She's obviously not telling me something. The question is, should I press the issue? Something's clearly been bothering her for a while. I want to help her, but would it just come off as me being nosy? Das ist die Frage. She's got to know I care about her, though. Ja, das sollte sie. Are you sure? If something's bothering you, I'm here to help you sort it out. Amy laughs then, but it's not her usual laugh. There's an edge to it that seems almost bitter. Sort it out? I'm not sure it can be sorted out, he so. An almost grin smile crosses her lips. It's like a smile of resignation. I don't think you could help me anyway. 
Ja, irgendwas geht ihr durch den Kopf, aber traurig, dass sie jetzt sagt, dass sie nicht glaubt, dass wir ihr helfen können. Aber es gibt natürlich Sachen, da kann niemand einem helfen, das ist schon wahr. Ah, that hurts. I don't want to say that it hurts to her, but it does. Doesn't she realize I want to be there for her when things go wrong? Well, I won't push you on the matter. But I'm here for you if you decide later that you'd like to talk about it. It might help. I can see the debate raging behind Amy's eyes. It seems like she wants to tell me, but she's not sure whether or not she can. Hey, forget about, about it for now, okay? We've got running to do. The mention of running, something that she can handle, brings Amy back to her usual self. Right. Hurry up and stretch out, he saw. We've got to get moving. She takes off like a shot, far quicker than I'm used to. Still, I try to keep pace with her, recklessly testing my limits. It gives me a feeling of freedom, like my heart is no longer important. I find myself wanting to laugh, filled with the feeling of moving beyond that I once called my boundaries. The nurse's warnings to not overdo things echo in my mind and I disregard them. This feeling I have, this willingness to risk a heart attack for something so trivial as a morning run, feels out of character for me. But is it? Or rather, should it be? I've got a weak heart, sure. It'll never be capable it will never be capable of the kind of speed and endurance Amy is capable of. Though I probably wouldn't be able to get that good even if I had a healthy heart. As we round the final bend I feel my legs screaming in protest, but for the first time I ignore them. I accelerate to finish at a sprint nearly catching up to Amy. That was never going to happen, of course. Still, I feel surprisingly good. Oh sure, my legs feel like they are about to catch fire and I'm having trouble staying upright. But there's been a shift of some sort today and it's all thanks to the girl grinning at the finish line waiting for me. <sighs> that felt a little faster than usual. My comment is met with a grin and a shrug. Can't have you think I was going to soft on you now, can I? But you managed to handle it just fine. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Still feeling the high from the run and moved by a surge of gratitude, I seize Amy in a hug. Thanks. Really, I'm not just saying that. I'm in your debt. Amy seems flustered by my words, squirming uncomfortably. Don't be silly, he so. Someone had to haul you out here, didn't they? And it's not like you're not doing anything for me, right? I needed a running partner, remember? I shake my head, still pointedly not letting go of Amy, who stops squirming and merely looks up at me with a quickly deepening blush that almost seems out of character. No, that's not true. You wanted a running partner, but you didn't need one. If I hadn't shown up the day after the festival, you would still run, right? But it doesn't work the other way around. I only managed to make it out a few times before the festival. And without you, I probably wouldn't have made it out all, at, all after that. Ich denke, da hat er vollkommen recht. Sie hätte, wäre bestimmt ohne ihn weitergelaufen, aber er nicht ohne sie. Amy smiles at me and prods my chest with one finger. You are pretty lazy, he so. Hey, I was giving you a compliment. Well, you're welcome, I guess. I'll pay you back somehow. Oh, well, that's not necessary, you know. I mean, I kinda like you, he so. And being able to run with you in the mornings isn't exactly a bad deal for me either, so. For someone who gets so much praise, she seems unused to gratitude. I can't think of anything else to say, so we fall silent. I became aware of Amy's breathing, of the dampness of her clothing and of the scent of her. 
Coming off of anyone else, it would stink. Coming off of Amy, it fits her in a way nothing else could. Her skin is cool, slick with sweat, and the breeze causes goosebumps to rise. Almost without thinking about it, I lean down and meet Amy's mouth, which has already moved to meet my own. Her lips are soft and she hums happily as we kiss, sending vibrations from her mouth to mine. There's a startling rightness to everything about this moment. We fit, another perf we fit one another perfectly. The kiss ends and I finally let my arms drop back to my sides. Amy is smiling warmly at me and giggles again. Come on, Hisa, we'd better go see the nurse. Then it happens. As she turns to begin walking, she gives out a tiny yelp and stumbles forward. Oh, we we have come sehen. Amy! I leap to steady her and notice with some concern that she's favoring the same leg as last night. Tja, hätte sie vielleicht mal auf uns gehört, ne? Your leg! Amy seems panicked and pushes away from me. It's fine. My expression must seem hurt by, because she hastens to apologize. Sorry, sorry. Didn't mean to push you like that. I was just... She stumbles for something to say. It's nothing, really. Hey, don't worry about it. She's so flustered I decide to shrug the whole thing off. But there's a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach now that won't go away. I try to step in and help her and she pushed me away. Smiling I shove those thoughts to the back of my mind and concentrate on Amy. I just don't want you getting hurt, that's all. You don't have to worry about me, honest. I'm fine. Yes, you say that, but I don't believe you. Why won't you tell me what's wrong? It's like she gets offended by my, tr by my trying to help. What am I supposed to make of that? I'm still trying to sort out what happened on the track as we arrive in front of the nurse's office. Amy raises her hand to knock, hesitates and turns to me, smiling guiltily. Hey, can you do me a favor? Of course. Can you tell the nurse that I see him later? Oh, 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 oh. Das solltest du nun wirklich nicht tun. I just remembered that I've got some stuff to take care of before class. So I really need to get moving. I peer at her closely and she fidges under my stare. Yeah, she's clearly just avoiding the nurse. That lack of hers. Well, whatever. I say I'd help and so I will. But I make damn sure she sees the nurse before the day's out. Yeah, okay, I'll let him know. Amy looks like I've just given her a pony on Christmas. Thank you so much. You're the best, Tiso. I'm rewarded for my complicity in her also I'm a, I'm rewarded for my complicity in her lie by a kiss that makes it all worth it, or so I tell myself. As Amy heads out of the building, trying hard not to let her limp show, I knock on the door of the office. Ah he so come on in. I don't see Amy with you. She's not sick again, is she? From the tone of his voice, I don't think the nurse is expecting me to say, yes, she is ill. Uh, she said that she'd forgotten to do something and so she had to skip out, but she'll see you later today. The nurse heaves an exasperated sigh. <sighs> Honestly, that girl. Hmm? Uh, she's been avoiding me. Yesterday she was in and out of here without even taking off her prosthetics. And now this. Oh, es wird ja immer schlimmer. Well, at least it's not just me. Amy doesn't want worrying. That's a comfort, I guess. Still, I feel like I should say something about her leg. 
I said I'd lie for her, but she really needs to see him. Now that you mention it, she was limping pretty badly today. And uh, last night as well. The nurse's eyes... The nurse's eye narrow at the words last night. And what exactly were you two doing last night? We were... Uh, on a date. The nurse raises his eyebrows as if surprised. Really? Interesting. Huh? Oh, nothing. His gaze turns thoughtful and then he grins at me. You don't think you could use some of that boyfriend charm to get her to come see me today, could you? Of course. I was planning on doing that anyway. I think, I think she's really hurt and just pretending she isn't. Hmm, yes, she does that. Afraid I'll make her stop running. Ah, so läuft der Hase. Uh, will you? I don't like to, but if it's bad enough that she's been limping, well... I guess I'll have to see what's wrong for myself before I make that call. I see. Amy not allowed to run? Perish the thought. I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. No wonder she's reluctant to admit anything's wrong. Well, I'll make sure she sees you. Good. Oh, and before I forget, he grins at me again in what feels like a vaguely threatening manner. Don't forget that I know what medications you're on. You be careful around Amy, got it? Wow, he looks serious too. Uh, got it. Don't hurt Amy, wouldn't dream of it. Wrong. I'd hate for you to be late. Huh? Late as in the late Hisa Onakai. He frowns briefly, dissatisfied. Uh, sounded better in my head. Well, at any rate, get out of here before you miss your first class. You've got things to do, I'm sure. Shoo! As I leave, I notice the nurse pulling out his phone and dialing a number. Mako, your daughter's being a pain in the ass again. I'd better head back to my room or I really will be late. Hey, wasn't he supposed to check my heart rate? Das hat er jetzt anscheinend völlig vergessen. Naja. Das wird ja hoffentlich alles in Ordnung sein, denke ich mal. The lunch bell sounds and I bring myself out of the stupor I slipped into during the morning classes. My lack of sleep last night, coupled with the increased pace of this morning's run, has left me a little exhausted. Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs up to the roof. There's a thrill of excitement now in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. True, both Amy and Rin are still my friends, but Amy has become more than that now. Rin is back in her usual spot on the roof, almost as if she'd never been absent. Feeling better, I take it. A raised eyebrow is my reward for my speaking. Better than what? Uh, better than you felt yesterday. Rin gives my question some serious thought. I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of yesterday, but it's all fuzzy. Uh, too much cold medicine? Well, I was asleep and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not sleep anymore. This way I keep trying so... Uh, but this way I keep trying so... I guess that's how I can keep from being overtired. Ah, an eternal mystery to keep you sleeping at night. Maybe mystery is the wrong word. Intang intangibility might be, might be the proper way to describe it. Ah, I see. No, I, I don't see at all. I have no idea what she's talking about. Da, da geht's ihm genauso wie mir. <laughs> Gott sei Dank, ich habe gerade gedacht, worüber redet ihr eigentlich? But that's okay, since I rarely do. Do you remember what sleeping feels like? Like yesterday? Do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, 
I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm? Maybe that's because he remembers subconsciously? Actually, I think I was worrying about Amy. Doesn't Amy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gives me a pause. True, but would she ask for help if she needed it? Rin frowns and I raise an eyebrow. Or will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is there something she should be asking for help with? Uh, her leg, for starters. This seems to catch Rin's, Rin's interest. Leg? It's hurt, but she won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. You have to make her. Like she makes me go to class for her own good. Otherwise she could lose her legs again and that's just too weird. Losing things twice. Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. Unless prosthetics are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of lust, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Das war ja mal eine richtig gute Antwort, die sie hier gegeben hat. Hm, I wonder... Wonder what? Amy seems to have snuck up on Rin and I... So Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which is itself unsurprising, I suppose. Rin manages to sit herself upright quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. Uh, your leg, how does it feel? That earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Amy pouts like I've just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. It's not a big deal, just a little soreness. I try to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then you should have no problem seeing him, right? Amy narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to this? Well, maybe a little. But that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not doing anything about it. That would make it worse, and I don't really want to see you hurt, you know? Call me crazy, but I kinda would prefer to see you happy and healthy. With each statement, Amy's frown fades a little more, until eventually she's grinning uh, all but a little shyly. Well, if you're going to put it that way, th then I guess I have to see him. Otherwise you keep worrying, and then I'll never hear the end of it, right? That's right, I keep bugging you about it, and that might put a damper on our dates. How's the foot he so? Talk to the nurse, Amy. <laughs> How was your day he so? Talk to the nurse, Amy. He so, I think I'm ready to go all the... Talk to the nurse, Amy! See, it doesn't work that well. Amy giggles at my high pitch. Also, okay, habe jetzt nicht so gemacht. Egal. At my high pitch rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate shove. My voice isn't that high, jerk. Uh, I thought it was pretty accurate. Danke, Rin. <laughs> Amy and I stare at Rin for a while before I burst into laughter. Amy crosses her arms and huffs, mock offended. You're both jerks. Such vile calumnies from you, young woman. I'm stunned that you would call me of all people a jerk. Honestly, I just... I don't know what to think. Amy sticks her tongue out at me. You ass. So, Rin, how's the art club these days? Rin, seemingly as surprised by the sudden change of topic as I am, takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it's okay. Although Nomiya keeps telling me to work harder. But I don't think he understands my methods. He always struck me as slightly creepy. 
Rin ponders the statement for a while. I've never really noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. Uh, how often do you meet? Thinking of joining, he's our. Uh, what? Nah, I've already decided to join a club. Really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh, you joined the tea club? Uh, no, I uh, joined the science club, I think. Amy looks highly confused. We have a science club? Uh, not really. It's just me. He's out. That's not a club. That's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean it's just me and Muto. I'm just the only student so far. Muto, really? A thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you were talking about yesterday? Your meeting with Muto? Yeah, that was was our first meeting, I guess. Amy giggles. Nerd. Hey, I can't help being clever. You know I could have used your help years ago. You should have had your heart attack earlier in life, he so. Oh, wie freundlich. I laugh and then realize this is probably one of the very rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. A hindsight. Yeah. The ringing of the bell ends our conversation. Hmm, guess we'd better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Rin, you too. Rin has apparently begun to doze off, so Amy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree, but maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Changing location is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Amy or I bother asking what it is. As we arrive at my classroom, Amy gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway Rin in tow. I turn to enter the classroom to be met by the duo of Shizune and Misha. Oh no, was wollt ihr jetzt von mir? Ja, äh, was die jetzt von mir wollen, das erfahren wir im nächsten Part von Let's Play. Und Let's Read Katawa Shoujo. Jo. Bis zum nächsten Mal, Leute, macht's gut. Ich hoffe, es hat euch wieder gefallen. Bye, bye, sagt euch euer Dreamy.